I believe at Pittsburgh University, you are studying some so some advanced ways of, of like stimulating the brain, like pho- yes. photo bio- photobiomodulation and transcranial magnetic stimulation, and also electrical. That is it, direct electricals. It would be uh, so. Could you talk through some of those? I mean, how do they work? And so, like photobiomodulation, how does it work? Is it something that people could use uh, to help with um, like mild co- cognitive impairment or just to improve? their cognition. Let me digress just a, yeah. a second uh, uh, to Shakespeare mm-hmm. and, and mental health and depression, which is epidemic and PTSD, mm-hmm. which, which everyone has some effect on generally. Uh, and, and Shakespeare wrote beautifully in Macbeth. He says, how does one pluck from memory some rooted sorrow, erase the written troubles of the mind, and with some sweet oblivious antidote, cleanse the heart and the bosom of that perilous stuff. So how does one pluck from memory some rooted sorrow? (laughs) You know, psychotherapy, uh, cognitive therapy, behavioral therapy, drugs, billions of billions of dollars in antidepressants, anti-anxiolytics. So as a surgeon, I'm, I'm, I'm looking for the biblical, you know, if an eye has, if thine eye has a mote in it, pluck it out. Mm-hmm. So what, how, how can you do that? So transcranial magnetic stimulation is a, has been around for quite a few years, but it's a device where you literally use electromagnetic waves and placed on a, a device on the head that primarily penetrates into the brain uh, in the left prefrontal cortex uh, primarily to literally reset the ionic charges in the axons. So I mentioned the 86 billion neurons, the synaptic connection. So in mental health, you know, what happens in the brain to really shove people over the edge? And, uh, you know, there's so much we, we just don't know. But to go back to a crude away, you know, in 1938, an Italian by the name of Cerletti used electric shock therapy to reset, <laughs> to shock the brain and reset the biochemical substrates that result in how we feel, how we think, how we process information. Subsequently, other energy sources have been used to do a similar thing. Transcranial magnetic stimulation is one. Mm. And it's now approved and paid for by insurance in the United States if you fail two antidepressant drugs for your depression. So it's a viable available, usable technique. Photobiomodulation uses photons or light. And there are different ways of of using light. One is a a device with near infrared uh, light sources that insinate the brain. Another is, is a light source that goes up into the nose to get the prefrontal cortex uh, in the subfrontal area. And uh, uh, and then ultrasound is also used now. Uh, there are non-invasive ultrasonic, low-frequency ultrasonic devices that are used for intention tremor of Parkinson's disease uh, and, uh, and, and other neurological conditions and opening the blood-brain barrier to allow various drugs to enter the brain uh, and using this non-invasively. So there's a tremendous amount of investigative work going on in terms of different energy sources to neuromodulate the function of the brain. Right. The, the but the neuro, I mean, the individual neurons uh, are obviously tiny, like to be able to focus so you, I guess you focus in an area that is 
related to the activity that you want to that's uh, exactly modulate. that's exactly right where there right. we we know various networks of the brain how those networks are interactive and uh uh the in the last 10 to 15 years amazing amount of work has gone into studying the connectome mm -hmm. the connectome is the wiring diagram of the brain how these 86 billion neurons are connected in terms of various networks and how these networks are operant in terms of everything we think, feel, and do. So we've identified some of these networks and using various energy sources, we're able to selectively stimulate to up-regulate or down-regulate them in terms of the behavioral aspects. It's... it's Neuroscience, I, I, I'm, it can't be more exciting as it is now and, and what we're discovering with the various tools and where where AI is going to take us, God only knows. I, I did see, that. I, I believe that there was some kind of device that would help you to learn better, a transcranial, I, I think it was, it was either magnetic or electrical. Yeah, transcranial, they, they've done studies with showing the transcranial magnetic stimulation may enhanced learning, mm -hmm. uh, the ability to process more information and retain more information. There are studies that have shown that. Thank you so much uh, for joining us today. Uh, where can people follow your work uh, and get your books? So yeah, you have a number of books that are released. Yeah. Uh, Square One uh, can be obtained through uh, Square One or maroonsquare1.com. Mm -hmm. uh, my website is josephmaroon.com. Uh, and uh, as I said, my email address is maroonjc at gmail.com. You're not active in brain surgery anymore. Is no, I correct? stopped operating a few years ago. Right. <laughs> and... Uh, I, I've, you know, I, I've done 50 years of neurosurgery. I, uh, oh. That was enough. Yeah. And, uh, but it led to really the most, uh, even more productive part of my career. Since I've stopped surgery, I've, I've time to focus on the things that we talked about on this show in a mm -hmm. much more detailed fashion. Uh, yeah, you're just doing so well. <laughs> we, uh, we, we've covered a whole lot of material, Richard. Yes, yeah, we, 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 we did. Okay, so um, Dr. Maroon, thank you so much for joining us today. It has been great talking to you. Thank you, sir, my great pleasure.